Bernard Nomberg with another uh, weekly edition of Nomberg Law Live, and it is a real treat for me today to be sitting next to Clarence Watkins. Good morning, Clarence. Good morning. And guys, we are talking about baseball. This is the onset of the baseball season, as you know, and we are at the historic Rickwood Field in the western part of downtown Birmingham. And Clarence, I have I've been looking forward to this interview for a number of weeks, and I appreciate you being here this morning. Well, we're glad to have you here, Bernard, at Rickwood Field. And before we really get started, I just wanted to tell you we're sitting here in the newly renovated office space above the front entrance of Rickwood Field. Mm -hmm. And we're in the what was the general manager's office. And when they did the uh, renovations, they were uh, wise enough to leave the original knotty pine paneling up. <laughs> And this is just a special place where people like Eddie Glennon, Glenn West, and Art Clarkson ran the ball club. So uh, this isn't a, a room that uh, fans or tours normally get to see. So it's really a special place. Well, you guys can see behind me the, the walls that Clarence was referring to and some of the artifacts that are here. If you can look over our shoulders, you can see Mr. October, who was a, a baron way back in the day. Uh, guys, we're, we're, the state of Alabama is known for its football, of course, but what a lot of people don't know is the rich history uh, for the state of Alabama with baseball, and that's why we're sitting here today. Unfortunately, we can't be inside the stadium because a lot of renovations are going on. It's all marked off, and we can't physically get in there. Hopefully, when we're finished in a little while, I'll be able to take some still pictures and share them or a little video. Clarence, tell us about your role, what you currently do for the Rickwood Field community. All right. Uh, as the executive director of the Friends of Rickwood, uh, my job is to oversee the daily activities, to monitor the construction process. Uh, I do a lot of, of activities with the public, uh, interviews, um, uh, tours, school groups. Uh, we get people calling, uh, wanting to have activities out here, such as a company wanting to have a, a day at Rickwood for their employees to play softball and picnic, birthday parties. We've even had one wedding. And uh, so that's uh, part of what we do here is, uh, is the renovations, the upkeep, and uh, all activities that go on here. When you have a 107-year-old ballpark, mm -hmm. there's always going to be something that needs to be done. Well, what, let's talk about that for just a second. What's the cultural significance, the historical significance of this park? Um, it, I think it goes back to uh, around 1993, 92, when uh, in Chicago, Comiskey Park was tore down. And at that point, Rickwood Field became the oldest professional baseball park in the nation. And today, games are played here on the high school level. Uh, sometimes, as well as the annual uh, Rickwood Field Classic that the Barons. Now tell us, who are the Barons and what is their, where do they fit into the baseball world? Okay, uh, the Birmingham Barons is a minor league team that has been active in this city since 1885. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been a little, a few year lapses here and there when th there was no team. But overall, uh, they've had a uh, long-term uh, existence here in our city and uh, uh, an important part of uh, baseball history here with the Barons and along with the Black Barons. And currently the Barons uh, have a, a new park downtown, but over the years they've played out in Hoover at the, the Hoover Met, but before that they were housed here alongside or with around the same time as the Birmingham Black Barons for years. Uh, yeah, the um the Black Barons uh, kind of end, ended their uh, professional baseball around 1962. The league kept shrinking and shrinking until mm -hmm. finally they called it quits. The Barons uh, last played here in 1987, and then they moved to Hoover, mm -hmm. and then the ballpark kind of uh, went silent mm -hmm. until in 1996 when the idea for the Rickwood Classic uh, came about and from then on we have that one special game every spring where the Barons come back 
and we play it. They play a regular season game, mm -hmm. and those th those games always have a theme. Mm -hmm. We take a, a special part of Barron's history, and we celebrate that. The players wear vintage uniforms. Mm -hmm. Some fans even wear uh, <laughs> vintage uniforms of whatever era we're talking about. People park antique cars out front. Uh, we have special autograph guests. And it's just uh, uh, the highlight of the year for us. And before I forget, guys, we're we're talking with Clarence Watkins. We're at the historic Rickwood Field today talking about baseball and the history of the park and the history of baseball in, in Alabama. If you want to share any memories you have of the park or watching the Barons, please do so in the comments. If you have questions for Clarence, we certainly will, will field those if they come in while we're on here live. Talking about the Rickwood Classic, the Barons are part of the AA White Sox organization, and they've been uh, now they're down at Regions Field downtown, a beautiful uh, park. In behind left field, Clarence is a Hall of Fame. The Negro League Hall of Fame is housed uh, back there. Uh, I assume that you're uh, well. I don't assume, but I guess that uh, the friends of Rickwood Field may have some involvement uh, with that, or maybe just as fans, you've attended there. Well, uh, there are several of our board members, including mm -hmm. myself, who mm -hmm. are on the research mm -hmm. committee for uh, the Negro Southern League Museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very, very proud of that. I'm very um, uh, uh, glad we have. That's just another uh, part of our baseball history. What I like to see happen is if somebody goes to the Negro League uh, Museum, that they tell, hey, you need to go out and see Rickwood Field. And if somebody comes here, I say, hey, you need to go <laughs> see the Negro League Museum because they're both uh, great uh, venues of baseball history. Yeah, if you love baseball, if you love uh, baseball in the South, those are two excellent places to go. And we'll put in the comments the links and, and how you can either see it virtually online or, or go, go to it. The Barons have been fortunate to been partners with several organizations over the many years, including the Colorful A's uh, back in the day with, with Charlie Finley. But even even more exciting for local fans, they've had so many wonderful ball players to come through Rickwood Field uh, over the many years, including Reggie Jackson, who's behind us. Uh, Clarence, let's let's talk a little bit a little bit of history. Uh, about some of the famous players. I know Raleigh Fingers has been through mm -hmm. here. Countless numbers of Hall of Famers have either played for the Barons or been a visiting team and played here. Well, that's correct. Um, uh, you can go back to um, uh, around 1919 when uh, uh, the owner of the team and stadium, Rick Woodward, had a uh, relationship with uh, uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm -hmm. And our first real big star to come through here was Pie Trainer, mm. and he played a year or two here and then moved on to a Hall of Fame career with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, in, in the uh, 1930s, uh, Rick Woodward uh, sold the team, mm -hmm. and uh, it was owned by another local man for a year or two, and then he actually sold the team to the Cincinnati Reds. Mm -hmm. And through the mid-30s and early 40s, Cincinnati owned the team, and used it in their farm team. Um, many peop baseball fans will remember Joe Nuxall, mm -hmm. who is known as the youngest uh, person to ever play in a professional game during World War II. And uh, from there, we moved on uh, in the late 40s. We were a farm team for the uh, Boston Red Sox. We had a lot of great stars come through here. Uh, Jim Pearsall, for one. Mm -hmm. Bo Ferris, and um, we were fortunate enough that uh, during that time, the Red Sox w would always stop through here and play a, uh, some spring training games. So the Birmingham fans got to see Ted Williams oh, in wow. his prime. Wow. So that was a great. Then we moved on to the New York Yankees. This is in the 50s when the Yankees were uh, the powerhouse of uh, Major League Baseball. And so a, a lot of the great Yankee stars like Ralph Terry and John Blanchard uh, uh, and played here. And so uh, that was a great time. Then we moved in the late 50s to the Detroit Tigers, and we were part of their farm system. And uh, 
Then uh, in 64, it became the Kansas City Athletics, which mm -hmm. later moved to uh, Oakland. Mm -hmm. And that, during the late 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. almost everybody of those great Oakland A teams, except Catfish Hunter, played at Rickwood Field. And so that was an exciting time uh, to be a Barons fan uh, or a Birmingham A's fan. And then it transitioned from the A's to the White Sox? Well, when they first came back in uh, 81, mm -hmm. uh, what happened was um, Birmingham had a minor league team, a double-A team. Mm -hmm. They were part of the Detroit Tiger organization. Mm -hmm. And their attendance was very low, and it just wasn't doing well. So mm -hmm. that's when the uh, organization here, wanting baseball back, bought the team from Montgomery and moved it here in 81. So for a few years, we were part of the uh, Detroit Tigers. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere in that uh, stretch from 81 to 87, we moved to the White Sox organization, and we've been with them all this time. And that is very unusual. So it's it, been 30-odd 30, 30 yeah. years. Yes. And, and during those 30-odd years, such notable players, Bo Jackson has been a Baron, uh, Frank Thomas, Robin Ventura, uh, Michael Jordan, of course, had his historic year in 94, uh, and many, many uh, players who play on the AA level for the White Sox have moved up or either directly to the pros or go through Charlotte to get to the pros. Oh, oh yeah. And in the last several years, it's kind of fun going out to the park at, at Regions Field and seeing these guys coming out of the college or at high school ranks, playing for the Barons for a couple of years, and then you see them uh, playing for the big club uh, at later in the season, usually on the call-ups. That's something that's changed in baseball over the last 20 years. It used to be you went from A ball to double A to triple A and then the majors. Mm -hmm. And it's very common these days for a double A player to play here mm -hmm. part of a season and then be called up to the major leagues. Before I forget, I, I want to give some shout outs to some of the folks who are watching us. Um, uh, Longtime friend Jeff Bear. I don't know if you're in, in Tokyo or in Japan right now watching us, but hello, Jeff. We've got Josh uh, watching us out in California, my mom, Ruth, downtown. Uh, thank you guys for, for checking in with us for a few minutes. If you've got questions or, or uh, memories you want to share, please throw them in the comments section, and Clarence and I will we'll field those as they, they come in. Um, Clarence, let's, let's transition out of, out of Birmingham, out of the Barrens, and talk about the rich history of Alabama Alabamians playing in, in the pros, and, and there's been so many now have gone on to the Hall of Fame uh, that everyone one knows. Who are some of the names that come to your mind? Well, the first thing when you talk about the Hall of Fame in Alabama, you must look to Mobile, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Mobile, Alabama, uh, that's where Hank Aaron came from. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Billy Williams, Satchel Paige. Uh, and I don't know if Ted uh, Radcliffe is in the Hall of Fame, but he certainly uh, uh, was a big star in the Negro Leagues. And Ozzie Smith was mm -hmm. born in Mobile. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here's something that I always find amazing. Mobile, Alabama has produced more Hall of Fame baseball players than New York City. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> Love it. population. Love it. You know, you spread out around the state, you've got Don Sutton from Clio. Yeah, uh, early win I think is from somewhere in South Alabama. Yes. I, I could be mistaken. Uh, you keep coming up. You've got obviously the Say Hey Kid in Fairfield. Oh, Willie Mays, yes. Uh, um, it just you could go on and on and on. And a couple, a couple things, a couple of players who uh, played for the Huntsville uh, Stars back in the mid '80s would have been Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire and all of those uh, uh, A's who were in the '80s and, and '90s would have come through Birmingham uh, to play the Barons. Uh, so you never know who you're going to see come through here. All those Cubs players that were on the World Series team from two years ago, they all came through here. Mm -hmm. uh, who's the, the the stars for the the, uh, the Dodgers who've come through here? Uh, Puig has played uh, here just in the last couple of years. Uh, I mean, you could just go on and on and on. And I think the, the folks who outside of Alabama who don't know uh, baseball, uh, the, the rich history here, it's something to be very proud of. Uh, in addition to the other sports that we obviously everybody knows about uh, here. Well, you know, we think of uh, Alabama as a football state, and it surely is, but you go back to 1910 when the ballpark was built. Mm -hmm. 
Birmingham and Alabama were a baseball state. <laughs> there was no uh, right. professional football. College football was in its infancy, mm -hmm. and there was no basketball. So baseball. Lit. The other thing that baseball, I mean, that Alabama has produced is baseball families. Mm -hmm. We have several families uh, the Walker family. Mm -hmm. You had uh, uh, Dixie Sr. and his brother who played Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. And then Dixie Sr. had his two sons, Harry Walker and Dixie Walker, mm -hmm. who both played uh, Major League Baseball. And both of it's probably the only brother combination to have both won a Major League batting title. Mm -hmm. And then Dixie's son, uh, played some minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Hairston family, mm -hmm. uh, who played, he played for the Black Barons. He then had two, uh, three sons who played minor league baseball, but Jerry had a very long professional career mm -hmm. with the uh, Chicago White Sox. Mm -hmm. Then Jerry had two sons who just recently played major league uh, baseball. Mm -hmm. And so you've got this rich uh, history of families. Then we also have the uh, Bankhead family mm -hmm. who had five brothers mm -hmm. who played Negro League Baseball with one of them making it to the majors with the Dodgers in the early 50s. So we've got uh, much more than just a few people making it to the pros. It it was our sport. A lot of people don't, don't realize or don't know that Hank Aaron had a brother. Tommy, who, who made it all the way to the pro level. Yes, he did. And then he, mm -hmm. for years, uh, he, he was a coach and manager mm -hmm. in the minor league for the Barons. Very good. I mean, excuse me, the Braves. So the Braves. Let, let's talk about this year's Rickwood Classic that's coming up at the end of May. Share some of the details and what, what, what goes on that week and that day. Well, uh, it is our number one uh, event for the Barons. Well, for the Friends of Rickwood, mm -hmm. it is. it will be this year, it will be uh, May uh, 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 12.30 start, a day game. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally we've kind of come up, uh, and that it may change, but we usually have it the Wednesday after Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. It's a time when the Barons will come here. They'll be playing the Chattanooga Lookouts. Mm -hmm. And um, our theme is the 50s the Yankees era, and we are very uh, happy to announce that uh, Bucky Dent will be our special mm -hmm. uh, autograph uh, guest for the classic and throw out the first pitch. Oh, fantastic. And for those of you who grew up uh, in my era when, if you were a Yankees fan, he's one of your favorite Yankees of the mid, mid to late 70s, early 80s. And if you didn't like uh, the Yankees, as I know Clarence was a, a Red Sox fan, uh, Bucky has a special nickname that I won't mention <laughs> here today uh, just because of his classic home run that won that one game playoff and yeah. sent him into the into the uh, playoffs deeper. Uh, but that's great. And I know I, I've been to the classic several years. Uh, it's always a very fun time there. The stands are practically overflowing. Uh, the There are uh, a band that plays. There's uh, uh, just a whole bunch of great uh, traditional baseball uh, things that go on for that entire day. And I know, uh, unfortunately, we can't show you live footage as uh, our interviews indoors because of all the, the prep work that they're doing outside. But but it sounds like the stadium is going to be in, in full bloom uh, by the time the Classic rolls around. It will be. It will be ready. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, that I enjoy about the Classic is the ending. Once the game is over, mm -hmm. The fans are allowed to go out on the field, mm -hmm. and they can usually get a few autographs if they want to from the players who are also lingering around wanting to take in the field. But kids can run the bases. You'll see a father and son out there, and he'll be pointing to something and sharing with his uh, children his memories mm -hmm. of Rickwood Field. Mm -hmm. You'll see people going out to the um, scoreboard to take photos mm -hmm. Something you don't get to do at a a minor league game or a professional game. You get to go out and stand on the pitcher's mound where Dizzy Dean and Satchel Paige stood. You can go out in center field and stand there and see what Willie May saw when he was playing here as a 17-year-old boy. <laughs> Uh, you said that the kids get to run the bases. What's the age cutoff for post-game base running? 
I need to know. It's very important. <laughs> we have no rules on that. It's not like when you see it in a professional game, it's a very structured event. Right. They line right. the kids up, mm -hmm. they let them run the bases, and they walk off the field. Here, the fans just linger and do what they want to do. You'll see a you'll see a couple of kids or a father and son playing pitch out there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it is just the time when the when the 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 park and the field belongs to the fans. Clarence, if if folks want to um, have an event out here, if they want to hold a birthday party or some other type of event that y'all hold. Who do they get in touch with, and what's the contact information? Well, that would be me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can call me at area code 205-999-5742. That would be the best way uh, to get in contact with me right now. Uh, we, we have, a, a, we have a, a people just want to come out and have uh, photos made at the mm -hmm. park. We have birthday parties. We people come out just wanting to have a little tour mm -hmm. and have some of the uh, highlights of the history explained. Uh, companies will uh, rent the park out to have a uh, employee event where the employees can play softball, uh, roast some hot dogs, and just have a nice event. So we're here. And we uh, we love it when we have people that want to come out here and be a part of Rickwood Field. And again, I'll I'll put in the comments uh, part of this uh, after we're finished all the contact information. There's also a Facebook page for the Friends of Rickwood Field, and we'll put the link to that as as well. Clarence, as as we conclude in in the next couple of minutes, and I appreciate your time and sharing your. Your, your love of the game, your experience, your expertise. Can you share with us a couple of fond memories that you have of coming to games here or, or ball players you've interacted with? Well, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, so mm -hmm. I, um, I try to look at Rick Woodfield very objectively and just say this, that if only one of the old Southern League ballparks could survive the best one did, and we and that's what we have at Ripwood Field. Uh, let me tell you a little story about, uh, I wrote an Arcadia book called Baseball in Birmingham to come out at the same time of the 100th anniversary of Rickwood Field. And in doing a, a book signing at one of the big Books of Millions store, it was storming that day and nobody was coming in, and I'm just sitting there twiddling my thumbs and this very petite little old lady walks in and she mm -hmm. sees my display and she kind of does a double take and looks at me. Mm -hmm. But then she goes on and does her business in the bookstore. Then she, when she comes back, she comes up to my table and says, what have you got here? And I said, well, it's a story about Rickwood Field and uh, the history of the players in the park and everything. So she picks up a copy and starts thumbing through it. And then she starts telling me her Rickwood story. Mm -hmm. And she tells me how she grew up in a family of five girls. She was the youngest. And that when her dad would come to a ball game, um, he would take her with him. And she says, you know, that's the only time I had my dad all to myself. Hmm. Hmm. So you don't, you don't think about... Yeah the girls and the women having their memories of Rickwood Field. So that that's always been a special story. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. There's there's so many uh, family stories and, and shared experiences, mm -hmm. whether it's a baseball game or any other sporting event that I know that, I know my childhood is full of, of those such memories. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Jeff Watkins asks, what were some of the other memorable events held at Rickwood Field throughout the years? Okay, uh, if you, you go back to uh, the early history of the park, uh, R Legion Field was not built till 1928. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of uh, college football games played here. Auburn and Alabama, mm -hmm. Birmingham Southern, Sanford, uh, and there was uh, uh, the uh, uh, Negro Colleges even had a bowl game here in the late 40s. Oh, wow. Uh, the circus came here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, there were large uh, Easter services hmm. here at the ballpark. 
in the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. you had uh, rock concerts here. So Rickwood has been a part of this community in a lot of different ways. If, if you guys uh, have never been out here, um, what's the best way to describe where we are, what part of the city? Well, um, the best way, if you know where George, uh, excuse me, Birmingham Southern is, mm -hmm. then you get off the interstate there um, at, at the exit, like you're going to Birmingham Southern, mm -hmm. and just follow that street down to, um, uh, it's Highway 11, but there's a Burger King right there. You can't miss <laughs> it. You turn right, and then you go down to the Church's Chicken and turn left, and you you see Rickwood Field is right there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's because the stadium is as old as it is. It's not one of these big cathedrals of the modern stadiums. It yes. really just blends into the community. So if you don't look for the signs or maybe the the lights up, up above, you're going to miss it. Uh, but that's one of the beautiful things I think about this park, Clarence. Uh, we've come to to the end of our time together here uh, today. But I I certainly I cannot express to you enough how much I've enjoyed this. And, and I hope you folks out there, if, either if you're watching us live or you'll catch the the replay later on. Uh, you certainly there's many ways to reach out to Clarence and the, the friends of Rickwood Field. But thank you for your time today. Well, Clarence. thank you, Bernard. Yes, it's been fun, and I always enjoy talking baseball, mm -hmm. and especially the Birmingham Barons and Rickwood Field. Guys, I'm going to conclude in just a second. Of course, we'll be back next Tuesday uh, with another uh, issue or episode of, of Nomberg Law Live. I'm going to, once we conclude, I'm going to hopefully get into the stadium, kind of sneak in and take a few pictures, uh, maybe a little bit of video, and I'll post it uh, to the comment section. Hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend.